live albums. We've got it on vinyl, CD and cassette. We've got pop rock, heavy metal, punk, funk, rap, and new wave. All sales are final, but you'll never regret all the music you get at Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Well, hello, indeed, do indeed come on in to Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Make yourself comfortable, browse around if you want to. We've got the CDs, we've got the, uh, we got the vinyl, we've got used vinyl, we've got new vinyl, and of course we've got the cassettes that admittedly aren't moving very well. They said, cassettes are going to come back too. Yee, yee, I don't know what that is. Uh, talking about my five favorite live albums today. I always loved a live album for two reasons. Sometimes they were a little different uh, than, the, stu- uh, than the, uh, the studio album. You might also get, uh, you know, like elongated guitar solos, maybe a drum solo. It, uh, I, I, I get it, I, I fall back on that great, you're getting the greatest hits all in one and uh, with some energy and, 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 and pop and, and more importantly, new packaging. They're exciting. Number five, Iron Maiden Live After Death came out in October of 1985, when I went up to number 19 on Billboard. Starts out with that Churchill speech, goes right into Aces High. You got Two Minutes to Midnight, The Trooper, Flight of Icarus, they're all on here. Everything you're looking for is on this uh, this album, which, by the way, I had on cassette, and I'll tell you why. And I am not proud of this. To this day, I'm not proud of this. Um, a co-worker of mine at one of the many record stores I worked at, you could probably figure out which ones, maybe by the dates, um, dared me to steal it. And I was like, uh, oh, I, I, I like to be liked. I want, I want my people to think I'm cool. So I, what I did is, uh, so that my managers wouldn't see it, is I, um, I, uh, I put it in my sock. Uh, I slid the cassette into my sock and then the pant leg over it. And uh, they were none the wiser. They're fools to this day. I hate myself for it. I hate it. But I stole. That's 100% true. I stole Iron Maiden's Live After Death on cassette. I'm not even sure I had a cassette player at the time. It just was, I just was the, just the thrill of doing it, man. Just the thrill. And then, it, and then that led to other things. I went to banks. I started robbing banks. I went to a ball alley. I robbed them. I can't, I can't stop robbing. All because of this Iron Maiden cassette. Number five, Iron Maiden Live After Death. Number four, I've talked about Ellis Paul in the past. Ellis Paul has become a good friend of our podcast, Never Not Funny. Uh, I discovered him because uh, Vans Gilbert, who had a live album co- uh, called Somerville Live, which is a great album. That's a great album in its own right. He On this album, he keeps talking about Ellis Paul. You know, my buddy Ellis Paul, Ellis Paul, Ellis Paul. I'm like, I like this guy. If this guy won't shut up about Ellis Paul, I'm going to go listen to Ellis Paul. And I forgot about it, so on and so forth. So one day, I'm at a used record store in Glendale, Gal- uh, Glendale California, and I see Ellis Paul live. Uh, it came out in 2000, and uh, I bought it. It was used, so it wasn't all that expensive. I was like, yeah, you know what? If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. Went out to the car, popped it in, and within three songs, I'm sobbing. The songwriting is terrific. The, the, the I like his voice. I like the music. I like everything about Ellis Paul. And this is, I said this to him, and uh, I, I think he took it in the compliment I meant. Uh, it was like, the studio, his studio albums were good, but the live albums where you really get Ellis Paul, and I compared it to Kiss. Because Kiss's first three albums are good, but here comes Kiss Alive, and that put him on the chart. I feel the same way about Ellis Paul, that his live album did that for him. Take Me Down, Conversation with a Ghost, uh, Look at the Wind Blow. Oh, my God. Uh, I can listen to this album over and over and over. And, uh, and then I have to just uh, go out and uh, put a fire hydrant on and uh, drink up all the water because I'll be dehydrated from the sobbing. Great, great album. Number four, Ellis Paul Live. One time, by the way, I was on a plane. This is 100% true. I hope I remember this right. Um, and the guy, I was listening to Ellis Paul, and the guy sat down next to me, and he's kind of he's kind of making some moves, and uh, and he's knocking into me, and he said, uh, Sorry, friend, I'm a little banged up. Uh, sorry for the lounging. My spine can't support my problems today. And I was like, I don't know what any of that means, but uh, you know, let's settle down for the flight. Number three. Neil Young, Live Rust, came out in November 1979, went up to number 15 on Billboard. I, I, this is another one, man. I just, I am just thrown back to living in hometown Illinois. And uh, I, I first heard this in the garage 
of uh, our neighbors. Our neighbors were a little bit older. Uh, the, I, uh, the, one of the, the uh, older brothers, I dated one of the sisters, um, and I assume they're all Mackinac, by the way. I, uh, uh, anybody I grew up with, I, 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 I assume they're MAGA until uh, proven otherwise. Uh, I dated this young lady. Again, I'm probably seventh, uh, seventh and eighth grade. I mean, dating is a, yeah, you know what? We, we went behind my garage and we made out. That's what we really did. Was it French kissing? Sometimes as we got older, uh, was I in sixth grade and eighth grader taught me how to French kiss? Of course, of course. And then I would teach it to all the other ladies because I, I was the man about town. Her older brother, Bob, was playing this Neil Young live Rust uh, while I'm uh, now trying to uh, make out with his sister, and uh, it just made made me feel uh, made me feel like a grown up, and uh, I love it. It starts, you know, you got you got hey hey my my hey hey my my oh to live on sugar I am a child comes a time I may put out a Neil Young tribute album where I do it like that, where it's just kind of a medley, right? Like, remember Stars on 45? They would do those medleys to the hits? I'm going to do that for Neil Young in 2022 to nobody's interest. Neil Young, Live Rust. Number two, UFO, Strangers in the Night, also came out in 1979. Uh, I think the most current thing I have here is Ellis Paul in 2000. Everything else is from my childhood. My cousins uh, slash stepbrothers, I know. Uh, they love this album, UFO, Strangers in the Night, uh, it went up to number uh, 42 in Billboard. I, I love UFO. Phil Mogg's voice, I think, is terrific. The various guitarists they've had over the years are great. And same deal with UFO and, and, and Kiss and Ellis Paul. This album captured UFO. And truth be told, I'm not the, I, I like UFO a lot. I'm not the biggest UFO fan, but I love this album. I also, I, you know, it, light, it lights out where it goes, lights out, lights out. Uh, the, the words go lights out, lights out in London. On the live album, he says the city he's in. And uh, I remember talking to my buddy Steve Iatt about it. And he was, uh, he saw them in Kalamazoo. Lights out, lights out, Kalamazoo. And when I was in a, a band in high school, uh, we, uh, we did a gig at the roller ring called Roller Wheels. And we did this song. Two things happened. Number one, uh, somebody sabotaged our show and they unplugged uh, the mixer. And uh, right in the middle of lights out. So the lights literally went out. And then I said, let's do it again. Light them up. And then I went, lights out, lights out, roller wheels. And that, oh man, nobody cared, but I did it. I also, one time, uh, was supposed to go see UFO with my friend uh, who uh, broke his ankle. And I believe that that was the case and could not go that night. And so I convinced my girlfriend, Danielle, to go with me to, to the House of Blues in Hollywood, California to see UFO. And she hated it from the second we walked in. Wanted no part of UFO, but she loved me. And that's what people do when you're in love. So number two, UFO, Strangers in the Night from 1979, the year of our Lord. Before I get to number one, I've got some honorable mentions. Now, you're probably wondering, Jim, why do you have honorable mentions if uh, you've already got the five? Why do you have to insert these? Because it's my show. Okay, so uh, yeah, you know what I probably should do? Top 10. I probably should just do top 10 and be done with the honorable mentions or the ties. Remember I had a tie once. What are you talking about? You have a tie. You got five. Here are my honorable mentions for live album. Uh, this is kind of a double dip here. You got Black Sabbath, Live Evil, and you got Ozzy Osbourne, Speak of the Devil. Um, they both came out like within uh, a month of each other. Uh, Ozzy left Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath now had Ronnie James Dio. Um, they're both, again, they're both, uh, I like them both. I like them both. They're both great. Chicago at Carnegie Hall, honorable mention there. Uh, it's another another example of uh, different versions of, of the greatest hits. Um, did I bring it up as well? Because uh, maybe I wrote the liner notes along with David Wilde on the re-release, the 16-disc re-release of Chicago at Carnegie Hall. Is my name on the sticker of the cover? Yes. Yes, it is. Did I insert it in this for that reason? You decide to yourself. Frampton Comes Alive, great album. Rush, Exit Stage Left. U2 and her Blood Red Sky. I really should have done a top 10 here. I love that U2 album, and I'm not the, uh, the biggest U2 fan. Saga, the Canadian uh, prog band. I like uh, In Transit and Detours. Two live albums from them that I think are terrific. And, of course, the legendary Cheap Trick live at Budokan. So now, let's get back to the countdown. Number one, they've come up a lot here, and, and for good reason. Their live albums are amazing. This one, specifically, came out in October of 1977. Went up to number seven on Billboard. Kiss Alive 2. Kiss Alive is a classic, no question about it. But Kiss Alive 2 was the one I got it for Christmas, and you just, 
you know, you're staring at that album cover and it came with posters and it came with a little booklet and it came with uh, tattoos that uh, I have since bought on eBay for way too much money. And uh, I, I, I don't know, should I, should I put them on or do I just keep them on the page? Um, or do I wonder every day, why did I spend $400 on fake tattoos? I'm, I'm exaggerating that by about 390 bucks. Point is this, I've got the tattoos. Uh, this album is to, you know, Detroit Rock City, King of the Nighttime World, uh, Ladies Room, I Want You. This is a good example of a live album where you're hearing uh, uh, the, the live version of I Want You is better than the studio version. And shock me, uh, we got a little surprise for you tonight. We're going to turn the microphone over to Ace Freely. Shock me. Wow. Then he goes into it. Unbelievable when you're a kid and you're staring at that album cover. Oh, it's wonderful. Number one, Kiss Alive 2. It's time for this week's Jimmy's Choice. You know the deal. On Twitter or email me. Uh, if you're on Twitter, use the hashtag Jimmy's Choice. You give me two bands Two artists, I've got to decide which one uh, gets to stay in the uh, in the ring and which one uh, has got to kick the bricks. This one comes to us from At Dirty Turbo. Foghat versus Grand Funk Railroad. Foghat, you got what do you got? Slow Ride, I Just Want to Make Love to You, Fool for the City, Third Time Lucky. Foghat fascinates me in that those songs are still played nonstop on classic rock stations as if they're as, as popular as Led Zeppelin. Yet Foghat, when they play live, play a place the size of my garage. I don't understand it. It confuses me. Grand Funk Railroad, American band, great, right? I'm getting closer. Uh, I'm getting closer to my heart. Some kind of wonderful. They do a cover of Locomotion. When I was in the band in high school, we would do, uh, uh, we're an American band. And uh, that, uh, that's, a, that's a good one. It gets uh, the blood flowing. But in this case, for this reason, I kind of said this about an album earlier, um, Owning this album made me feel like a grown-up, made me feel like a teenager um, when I was uh, just a young, young boy when this came out. The album cover's cool. You slide it out, and their name, the, the word live is uh, uh, cut out, and then you slide the sleeve out, and uh, you get to see the band. Uh, gonna go with Fog Hat. Thank you so much for watching this week's Jimmy's Records and Tapes. If you liked it, subscribe. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. We've got a Spotify playlist. It's got songs from all four seasons of Jimmy's Records and Tapes. Of course, you can find me at Twitter, at Jimmy Pardo. And I am the host of the award-winning podcast, Never Enough Funny. So if you like this nonsense, come over there where it's a lot more of it twice a week. Until next time, the record is back in its sleeve. Mm-hmm.